Good evening and welcome back to another episode of The Longing. I must admit I very nearly forgot to do the recording today. It is only nine o'clock but it was uh, it was getting there. I thought I had already done it but regardless let's get on with reading more Aesop's fables. The Ass and His Driver An ass was being driven down a mountain road and after jogging along for a while sensibly enough he suddenly quitted the track and rushed to the edge of a precipice. He was just about to leap over the edge when his driver caught hold of his tail and did his best to pull him back. But pull as he might, he couldn't get the ass to budge from the brink. At last he gave up, crying, All right then, get to the bottom your own way, but it's the way to sudden death, as you'll find out quick enough. The Lion and the Hare A lion found a hare sleeping in her form and was just going to devour her when he caught sight of a passing stag. Dropping the hare, he at once made for the bigger game, but finding, after a long chase, that he could not overtake the stag, he abandoned the attempt and came back for the hare. When he reached the spot, however, he found she was nowhere to be seen, and he had to go without his dinner. It serves me right, he said. I should have been content with what I had got instead of hankering after a better prize. The Wolves and the Dogs Once upon a time the wolves said to the dogs, Why should we continue to be enemies any longer? You are very like us in most ways. The main difference between us is one of training only. We live a life of freedom, but you are enslaved to mankind, who beat you and put heavy collars round your necks, and compel you to keep watch over their flocks and herds for them. And, to crown all, they give you nothing but bones to eat, don't put up with it any longer, but hand over the flocks to us, and we will all live on the fat of the land and feast together. The dogs allowed themselves to be persuaded by these words, and accompanied the wolves into their den. But no sooner were they well inside than the wolves set upon them and tore them to pieces. Traitors richly deserve their fate. The Bull and the Calf a full-grown bull was struggling to force his huge bulk through the narrow entrance to a cowhouse where his stall was, when, when a young calf came up and said to him, If you'll step aside a moment, I'll show you the way to get through. The bull turned upon him an amused look. I knew that way, said he, before you were born. The Trees and the Axe a woodman went into the forest and begged of the trees the favour of a handle for his axe. The principal trees at once agreed to, the, to so modest a request, and unhesitatingly gave him a young ash sapling, out of which he fashioned the handle he desired. No sooner had he done so than he set to work to fell the noblest trees in the wood. When they saw the, the use to which he was putting their gift, they cried, Alas, alas, we are undone! but we are ourselves to blame. The little we gave has cost us all. Had we not sacrificed the rights of the ash, we might ourselves have stood for ages. The Astronomer There was once an astronomer whose habit it was to go out at night and observe the stars. One night, as he was walking about outside the town gates, gazing up absorbed into the sky and not looking where he was going, he fell into a dry well. As he lay there groaning, someone passing by heard him, and, coming to the edge of the well, looked down and, on learning what had happened, said, If you really mean to say that you were looking so hard at the sky that you didn't even see where your feet were carrying you along the ground, it appears to me that you, got, you deserve all you've got. The Labourer and the Snake A labourer's little son was bitten by a snake and died of the wound. The father was beside himself with grief, and in his anger against the snake, he caught up an axe and went and stood close to the snake's hole, and watched for a chance of killing it. Presently the snake came out, and the man aimed a blow at it, but only succeeded in cutting off the tip of its tail before it wriggled in again. He then tried to get it to come out a second time, pretending that he wished to make up the quarrel. But the snake said, I can never be your friend because of my lost tail nor you mine because of your last child. Injuries are never forgotten in the presence of those who caused them. The Cage Bird and the Bat 
A singing bird was confined in a cage, which hung outside a window, and had a way of singing at night when all other birds were asleep. One night a bat came and clung to the bars of the cage, and asked the bird why she was silent by day and sang only at night. I have a very good reason for doing so, said the bird. It was once when I was singing in the daytime that a fowler was attracted by my voice, and set his nets for me and caught me. Since then I have never sung except by night. But, the bat replied, it is no use your doing that now when you are a prisoner. If only you had done so before you were caught, you might still have been free. Precautions are useless after the event. The Ass and His Purchaser A man who wanted to buy an ass went to market, and, coming across a likely-looking beast, arranged with the owner that he could be, should be allowed to take him home on trial, to see, see what he was like. When he reached home, he put him into the stable along with the other asses. The newcomer took a look around and immediately went and chose a place next to the laziest and greediest beast in the stable. When the master saw this, he put a halt halter on him at once and led him off and handed him over to his owner again. The latter was a good deal surprised to see him back so soon and said, Why, do you mean to say you have tested him already? I don't want to put him through any more tests, replied the other. I could see what sort of beast he is from the companion he chose for himself. A man is known by the company he keeps. The Kid and the Wolf A kid was a kid strayed from the flock and was chased by a wolf. When he saw he must be caught, he turned around and said to the wolf, I know, sir, that I can't escape being eaten by you, and so, as my life is bound to be short, I pray you let it be as merry as may be. Will you not play me a tune to dance to before I die? The wolf saw no objection to having some music before his dinner, so he took out his pipe and began to play, while the kid danced before him. Before many minutes were passed, the gods who guarded the flock heard the sound and came up to see what was going on. They no, no sooner clapped eyes on the wolf than they gave chase and drove him away. As he ran off, he turned and said to the kid, It's what I thoroughly deserve. My trade is the butcher's, and I had no business to turn piper to please you. The Debtor and His Sow A man of Athens fell into debt and was pressed for the money by his creditor, but he had no means of paying at the time, so he begged for delay. But the creditor refused and said he must pay at once. Then the debtor fetched a sow, the only one he had, and took her to market to offer her for sale. It happened that his creditor was there too. Presently a buyer came along and asked if the sow produced good litters. Yes, said the debtor, very fine ones, and the remarkable thing is that she produces females at the Mysteries and males at the Panathea. Festivals these were, and the Athenians always sacrifice a sow at one and a boar at the other, while at the Dioni Dionysa they sacrifice a kid. At that the creditor who was standing by put in, don't be surprised, sir. Why still better, at the Dionysa this sow has kids. The Bald Huntsman A man who had lost all his hair took it to wearing a wig, and one day he went out hunting. It was blowing rather hard at the time, and he hadn't gone far before a gust of wind caught his hat and carried it off, and his wig too, much to the amusement of the hunt. But he quite entered into the joke and said, Ah, well! The hair that wig is made of didn't stick to the head on which it grew, so it's no wonder it won't stick to mine. The Herdsman and the Lost Bull A herdsman was tending his cattle when he missed a young bull, one of the finest of the herd. He went at once to look for him, but meeting with no success in his search, he made a vow that, if he should discover the thief, he would sacrifice a calf to Jupiter. Continuing his search, he entered a thicket, where he presently espied a lion devouring the lost bull. Terrified with fear, he raised his hands to heaven and cried, Great Jupiter, I vowed I would sacrifice a calf to thee if I should discover the thief. But now a full-grown bull I promise thee if only I myself escape unhurt from his clutches. And with that, we actually come to the end of the episode. So, let's sit back down and say thank you very much for joining me today. 
I hope you all have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon or night. No matter what time of day it is, I hope you all have a wonderful one of it. And as always, we will be back tomorrow for more of The Longing. Goodbye.